I got a chance to see something today that absolutely blew my mind. Long story short, I'm gonna be in this awesome video game documentary called Rarity. James Rolfe is gonna be amongst a ton of others and also a man named Dennis, which is one of the co-founders of WADA Games. And the man Edward, who is making this film and who is working on this film, is over at Dennis's house right now, sending me some videos and some clips of his game room. And I thought, this is unbelievable. This is all the top tier stuff that you could imagine. And I'm talking in every type of different gaming collectible item that completely, utterly blew my mind looking at. So I said, hey, can you shoot some footage and send it over to me? Which is why I'm shooting vertically because Edward sent it to me vertically, which I told him that's totally cool to do with. He knows what he's doing, he's a filmmaker. But he just sent me it and I wanted to share this footage with you guys. So you guys check this out. Have your mind blown like mine was. My goodness, this is amazing. Check it out. Dennis, one of the co-founders from WADA Games, who's gonna be in the video game documentary, Rarity, along with me and James Rolfe and many others. You gotta check out this room and check out the documentary later. It's not out yet, but when it comes, I'll leave some information in the description. Check this out. So we are going down the stairs here at Dennis Khan's house, one of the most impressive collections I have ever seen. Dennis Khan, of course, uh, is one of the founders of Water Games. This is just going down a small hallway here. As you can see, we're already getting into the, uh, the heavy hitters here. Everything, everything you could think of is here. And it's not even like it's a, a basement. It's like just a, a fun house full of incredible things you don't see anywhere else. Look at this. It's Tomb Raider there. Mortal Kombat Deception. Uh, and we're here actually shooting for our documentary called Rarity Retro Game Collecting in the Modern Era. And we're at his house here in Chicago. We flew out here, we're here for the day. So we're uh, trying to get as much as we can of this. However, there is so much as you can see and it just goes on and on and on. You haven't even seen anything yet. This is uh, just the first little open room here. And you know, each of these pieces you're seeing are like hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Uh, just these different branches here. We'll go in here, I'll back up. You'll see this right here. And we'll walk in. You see some actual stuff in here, full scale models all over the place artwork of all kinds we got a test station for the nintendo here original posters everywhere um honestly it's it's one of the most impressive things i've ever seen um <laughs> some people go to you know sports stadiums and they're like this is incredible but i'm going in here and i'm like you know, you can tell I'm, I'm kind of a loss for words. This whole Nintendo 64 collection here as we walk through. There's just so many things. You can't even see everything in probably a week, let alone the five or six hours that we're here. And these are just all controllers of all kinds. Nintendo Power magazines. And then you just look everywhere. Super Mario World cabinet. And a bunch of displays everywhere and the soul blade display there and as we leave this we're not even like all the way through all right adam we have two options here here we have nintendo games boxed we have some aftermarket games full collection boxed one of my personal favorites here chiller Chiller was one of the first games to be banned in the United States because the entire game is literally just torturing people. It's a point and click game where basically you just uh, put people in torture racks and you just keep clicking until uh, the torture rack tightens and rips their limbs off and things like that. So it was one of the first games. So check this out. This is the Super Nintendo section. Some more amazing displays, dioramas, GameCube, 
games down here all around. Waveboard controller. And uh, we're about to film Dennis in the other room, so that's why I haven't gone over there yet. Dennis is over there with my director of photography, Adam, and we're going to uh, look at the Game Boy stuff first. So we're trying to setting up lights and trying to figure out why a certain monitor won't work. But uh, here's a preview here of just the Game Boy stuff, and then we have all of these sealed Super Mario Worlds. All this sealed stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm just realizing like this that these are mostly sealed for the most part. These Game Boy games. Uh, more displays here. Here's our cameras. Here's Dennis walking hey. by. Trying to figure out this uh, this problem. Here's Adam. Yo. But this is the Game Boy section. We'll go in here. And he is one game away from a complete Game Boy set, and only five people in the world have done that. Uh, if you know how much a Pokemon Yellow version goes for now sealed, then you're in the um, minority because some of these games are selling for as much as $25,000, which is crazy. We get some more stuff down here. And... Crash Bandicoot. So that's everything so far, kind of in a nutshell. We can go through more stuff in the documentary. Check it out. Rarity, retro game collecting in the modern era. Uh, we have Dennis, we have James Ralph, we have Riff from Pixel Game Squad. We have so many awesome collectors, big and small, from all over the country. And uh, we're just trying to do a service to all the people who enjoy collecting but really haven't seen any documentary or anything like that um, about collecting in general and just like you, that just hit the surfacey stuff so anything you want to say to wherever this video goes Mr. Dennis Khan? Just uh, keep uh, keep on. <laughs> no, I got nothing man. <laughs> keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> Alright there you go guys we're going to uh, sign off shoot the rest of this interview but thanks so much for taking a sneak peek at the documentary.